What is up, everybody? I'm here with my client, Kirsten. She is amazing and um, just wanted to share some wins today. So let's just dive right in. So Kirsten, tell us more about you and a little bit of uh, your story and, and journey to this point. Um, yeah, I am Kirsten McCormick and I'm a personal trainer and nutrition coach in Seattle, Washington. Uh, I've been in the industry for a little over 16 years. Um, I spent my first 10 years in Los Angeles working with executives, celebrities, high profile clientele. Um, and then I transitioned and moved to Seattle in 2014. And at that point I was doing a little bit of virtual one-on-one -on -one work. Um, and then transitioned back to full one-on-one -on -one work in person with clientele prior to the pandemic. Um, and once the pandemic hit, it was a smooth transition to one-on-one -on -one virtual work. But again, that was still one-on-one. -on -one. And ever since my move to Seattle in 2014, I'd been trying to figure out ways to become more remote um, where I wasn't trading time for um money. Uh, and yeah, I tried a lot of different things and, and couldn't quite find the perfect fit and it's still a work in progress, but, um, sure. finding Samim has been a, a great stepping off point for that. For sure. Well, thank you for sharing. I think, I guess my, my question for you is like, when you first started kind of rewinding back, you know, how did we meet and what was the biggest challenge or problem for you personally kind of doing this transition? Um, cause I know you've tried some stuff and obviously you're really bright. So if it wasn't me, it was gonna be somebody else, but I'm glad obviously you joined up. So tell us more about that. Um, I actually found you, Smeem, uh, via a YouTube ad. I think I was, you know, working on a, a program for a client and on YouTube and you have all these YouTube ads that pop up for you. And it happened to be Smeem and it caught my, caught my attention because I heard, I used to be an Equinox trainer. And so I worked for Equinox for 10 years and that's like a big, you know, proud moment in my career, like starting with them. And, and they, I, I really value the, the expertise that I learned from Equinox. Um, and I, and I think they really do develop high quality trainers and coaches. Um, and so hearing that Samim had already been an Equinox coach and then transitioned his business and then into coaching other coaches to transition online. I, it intrigued me. And so I reached out and we had our first call and, and I will be very honest. I was very skeptical. Um, I, I, it takes a long time for me to trust people and to trust processes. Um, but yeah, I, you know, after a couple conversations with my husband, I, I was like, okay, I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to dive in. And it's been, it's been great. Um, I still have a lot of work to do, but um, I've had some, some great success since starting to work with Samim. So what was the, what did you hit in your first four weeks of, of joining? What was the, kind of give us a little bit of background on that and kind of um, repackaging stuff like that. And then also your LinkedIn one as well. Mm -hmm. Sure. I think I also forgot to answer the, one of your other questions, sure. um, which was my biggest challenge, but, um, I think my biggest challenge just to touch on that really quick was not knowing how to get in front of the right clientele for my business. So obviously when I lived in Los Angeles, I was in front of the right clientele all the time. And then in Seattle, it's just a different market in general, but also I know those, I know the people that are my right clientele exist here, but it just, it, I didn't know how to get in front of them. All of my work is referral based, but then if I'm, if I'm getting referrals from clients, they're going to be, it's going to be in the same way in which I work with my current clientele, which is one-on-one -on -one, um, or the remote clients that I, I wasn't charging enough for. So that was another big, big problem for me. I wasn't charging my value. I was wasting a lot of time and then not getting compensated appropriately. Um, and then I think your, your next question was, what have I tried? Is that? Um, yeah. Was so I guess what was the result? So what, what kind of happened? Oh, what? the first four. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. The first four weeks. Um, so in the, I think the biggest piece for me in those initial few weeks was crafting my offer and determining my ideal client. So I had a, a, an idea of who my ideal client was and, and who I tend to gravitate towards working with. But I, I think really defining that with you and your team was 
super important and helpful for me. And then also crafting the offer that I delivered to those clients so that it was just like a really smooth, clear and concise offer that just made that transition really, really clean and really easy to communicate with them. Um, yeah. And so that, and then also using the LinkedIn strategy, which I, you know, I'd been on LinkedIn, but not really in a, in a way where I was communicating with people. It just kind of was like a, you know, resume up there and changing the language based on your recommendations was really helpful. And I think one of the things we talked about, like, I am not a salesy person and it's something that I really don't want in my business, but even just changing a few words made a tremendous difference. Um, I think, I hope, I hope it continues to make a tremendous difference. Um, yeah. And I didn't have to go really salesy, but, but just using the, using the proper language to attract the people that I want to attract. For sure. So what was like the, the result from LinkedIn specifically you got, um, you know, after that shift? Um, so I've, I've had one new client from LinkedIn with this process. Um, and his, in our initial call, his, one of his first comments was you had the, you said on your profile that you work with this sort of person and with this sort of result. And that is exactly what I was looking for. So that is just a testament to using the proper language to attract the right clientele. And then with that client, just having the right offer set in place, it was an easy, an easy sale. And how much was it? Um, and was it, was it paid in full or how, how did that go? Yeah, that was a, a paid in full client, um, paid in full for six months. Um, and yeah, and then within within that that same twenty four hours, I also had a paid in full three month client and a paid in full twelve month client. And what did what did that total yeah. to? Twenty nine thousand. That's awesome. It's so yeah. cool to see you came in and you you pretty much doubled your your investment coming in pretty quickly. Um, obviously, there's we have way more work to do, but it's cool to see you came in and really executed. Whenever I see people with a lot of experience, it's cool to see that like you're even closer than people who are beginners. And I'm not saying beginners obviously don't succeed. It's not it. It's that you, you've almost been so accustomed to doing your business in a certain way that when you make small changes, like huge things happen, obviously the same thing can happen to a beginner, but it's almost like you're, you've got a ton of experience and you know what you're doing. And so you're not just coming in here. Like you're expecting more because you're like, I know what I'm doing. I just need to know what's the missing piece. And you've obviously come in and you've executed incredibly well you communicate really well overall and you're just a high value trainer and coach. And I, I commend you on that because a lot of people come in and they think, well, I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to like make sales and market. But like what I love about you is you really care about people. You genuinely want to serve. And I think that's the type of person that will succeed in this program. It's like, yeah, you do need to get good, but you're, you're not wanting to be sales. You came from a good place. You're like, I want to help people. And I don't want to be the person who's just there for the money. And I, I agree. I think the best people who succeed at the highest level, even in a program like this, is you have to have services, your mindset. And then as you start to dial in your sales and marketing, that just needs to be a piece of it, but you can't be successful online without really having the best interests of other people and wanting them to succeed. So obviously mm -hmm. there's a testament to you as well. Um, um, so yeah, I'm really excited for you. That's awesome. So I guess if you're kind of thinking, you know, what would you say to somebody in a similar position? Obviously you're really experienced, you're very knowledgeable and you're a high value trainer. What would you say to somebody in a similar position who's thinking, I need to go online and I, I want to learn the right stuff? What would come to your mind on that? Maybe if they were going to join this program or, or do something similar. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think that one of the biggest pieces is the accountability piece. Like you're, you are there and whether I do all of my work or don't do all of my work, which I'm behind on some of my work. Um, I know that I have a coach in my corner and there's also a team of other coaches that are a big part of it. So just that accountability piece makes a huge difference in just being able to push forward with whatever your own personal business goals are. Um, and I think that something that I 
when I've already mentioned this, but just determining the right clientele that you want to be working with is so important. And, you know, I, I, it, at parts of my career, I'm like, well, I work with all these different people and I can work with all of these different people, but it's, if, if you're not really speaking to one person and determining with it, you know, b- bouncing ideas off of someone else, um, like Samim and his team to figure out who that person is for you, um, it can, it can leave you stuck. So, so having, the accountability and the team to help you determine that. And then also determining how, how, what, what is the work that you are going to provide? And you guys do a really great job at, at, you know, breaking down exactly what it is that you do and then how to craft that in, in a, in a unique way. Yeah, for sure. And, and I then think... just tr- trusting in the process too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, we, we've, you know, it's so funny because you and I started off, you know, this, this is the truth, right? You start off being like, oh my God, I've been doing this. And it's, I, what I love about that is that it's totally normal, right? When somebody comes in, like you had every right to be like, oh my God, we're doing the right thing. And like, you have the nervousness and then you came in and you started to do really well. And that's so common where you were putting a lot of trust in us to help you kind of shift, make a shift. And obviously we have so much more to do, but it's cool to see someone in your position with, you know what you're doing, right? So to give us that control, that, that requires a lot of trust and, and a lot of just like, hey, I'm going to follow through. Like, I hope you do that too. And we did. Um, but also, you know, I know a lot of programs, like they'll just have a course. And I, I know your fear was like, is this just a course? I'm going to get support. Um, do you feel like the people in our program, like let's say on the coaching team, do you feel like everyone's an expert or you're just getting sort of like somebody random to help you? Because I hear this a lot where people are like kind of given random coaches of another program, but, you know, you've been helped by all of us in different ways. I'm assuming at this point, how do you feel about that? Uh, like the people on your team or the other coaches? On uh, the, yeah, the people on my team. The people on your, yeah, absolutely. Like Max is fantastic. And um, Jeremy, who you've recently brought on as um, to help you, like he he is such a great resource too, um, who is another one of your clients who has, has really been successful through your program. Um, yeah, he's been a, a great resource to talk to and and... Yeah, you guys all bring something different to the table, which you know makes it more of a, a holistic program. Yeah, I just see all the time that you know. I think a value of mine is like I don't want ever, anybody to ever experience our program where they're not dealing with an expert. So like I don't care who we bring on and what we experience, it's going to be the top of the line because that's what I want from you guys. I want you guys to come in, bring your best, and it's just not congruent if we don't do the same. So we're like, mm-hmm. you're never going to be given support from somebody who's not like. 10 X above your level. And they're not like just kind of filling a gap because I, I noticed a lot of programs. What I just don't agree with in the market is that people will let you work with a coach who's like so beyond underqualified just to put a body in the space. And it's just something that I, I can't stand. So I'm so happy, obviously that you come in and you've done well and we have a lot more to do, but um, yeah, that yeah, guys this is Kirsten. She's incredible. She's very experienced. Um, and uh, yeah, really grateful to have her here today. So thank you. Yep. Well, I will talk to you soon. Hey, thanks to me.